Okay, it's about 3.30. Um, that last 20 is an annoyance, um, but um, it's not really, it's, it's not gonna, it's not gonna stop me for the night anyways. Um, am I gonna have any money left over? Um, not. Um, what I need to do is I need to uh, run to get to a bank machine for four. to um, replace the last 20. Is it possible that I spent that last 20? It's, it's weird because I should have had, um, I should have had denominations of five. Um, or not, denominations of four, right? So, what I had in my pocket was I had, I had 16 because I clearly, clearly broke. Okay, so there should have been two. Okay, so I had three 20s. I'm going to set up Batteries here. I had three twenties. One of them I drank through. I was expecting to do that. The other one I was expecting to drink a little bit out of. I did that. I have sixteen left from that. So I bought one drink. That's four dollars drink. That makes sense. In fact, I even on my break. Um, but then I have two ones. Where do those two dollars come from? I don't. There's not really any um, explanation as to why I would be missing a 20 and have two ones. On top of that, my cigarettes moved from that pocket to that pocket um, and were gone. So I'm almost left to conclude that somebody was in my pocket. Um, that's kind of got to be um, the truth of it. The only other way around it is if I didn't tip. If I did drink through it and near the end I didn't tip. Is that possible? It might have been possible um, if I couldn't find it kind of thing, right? But I mean, I don't, uh, if I drank through that, I would have had five, ten, ten drinks at the bar. Well, I was there for a long time, but I presume I stopped drinking at it. It, it, the, the end of the night. It's the middle of the morning. Um, but it's, it's more blurry and just like it's, it's dancing is always like that because you're not like you know you're just standing in place. You're not like, you, you can remember dancing, but you don't really, right? I caught the bartender giving me back bad change. Um, is, it, is it a possibility that I didn't catch her the second time? I mean, like she she tried to uh, tried to shortchange me um, two dollars, right? But. Actually, you know what? Let me think about this. I'm starting to think I did drink a cigarette. 
Let me think about it. Okay, yeah. I remember breaking a 20, and I remember putting a 5 down after I broke the 20. So if I have two left, I have two 20s, and I have 16 out of 1, meaning I must have broken them both, because I remember putting the 5 down. So why do I have two dollars? I must have forgotten to tip on the last beer, or one of the last beers. I must have put the five down and taken the two and just, I just forgot. Okay. So that means I had 11 drinks at the bar last night. Yeah, okay. Well. Part of this is a little blurry, it's from like one to four. So somebody actually, somebody that worked there was like, like, this isn't the first time this happened at that bar. It's like, they seem to be, I, I mentioned that this morning, they seem to be over, overly concerned, right? Um, I'm just fine, but they want, they, they were, not convinced of that truth. <laughs> Put it that way. Um, and they were trying to talk me out of. Like they were trying to talk me to leave. It. So, but I mean, it, I was fine, <laughs> right? So, like, the point is, I did. I, I start like. That sounds like a lot, but I. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, I gotta get to the. Uh, well, no, it's just. If I drank it, I drank it. I was more concerned about it disappearing, but... I, I spent it. That's it. Oxygen's razor. Okay. Thanks, sir. I'm gonna do a different bank today because... Uh, bank I don't really go to is closed. So. Okay, no, no. I couldn't... It couldn't have been... That $2 couldn't have come from the very end, right? In, in fact, they were split because... I had one of the dollars in my back pocket, so I must have, if, okay, so let's, let's trace this out. I put a 20 down, they give me $16 back, that's $1, right? I give them either, no, I give them a five on the next one, and I put the dollar in my back pocket. What's missing is a 10. Um, the other possibility is if on the first time, not, yeah, on the first time she might have given me back, instead of giving back a 10, a 1, and a 5, she might have given me back two 1s and a 5. No, because I have the extra one still. So what happened to the 10? Um, I don't know. I could have... No, I wouldn't have I... Is it possible that I just had two drinks and I just gave, you know, I guess? Um, let me check something. I just wanted to double check some other pockets and not, okay, so. Because I remember breaking the 20 and I remember putting the 5 down, so that all adds up, right? The 10, uh, I might, I might have dropped a 10 in the bathroom or something. It's, uh, it's a possibility. Or I could have drank a bit, I don't know. But that's, uh...
it's not like it really matters, right? It's gone now, but uh, see, in my mind, there's a big difference between losing ten and losing twenty. Even though it's like I mean, it is twice as much, but I mean, it's not like it. Sorry, trigger happy. Um, I'm moving from a small bill to a big bill, right? So it's like a denominational change. It's just like logical, it's silly, but anyways, I don't know. I might have drank through it. I don't remember. I remember breaking the 20. I remember putting the five down. And that explains why I have the one in my back pocket. And that explains why I had the one in my front pocket. Um, the 10 can't really be explained. In fact, I probably would not have broken a 20 if I could have found the 10. So I'm left to conclude it was probably dropped somewhere. But I, I, I also, I can't help but think that the answer to what happened to my cigarettes is intrinsically connected to the answer of what happened to my pen. Anyways. Um, I'm bringing a lot less money tonight. Um, I was gonna go to the same place, but I'm not. I might not go back there for a long time at all. I think that, uh, well, I mean, the benefit of that spot is that it was always open and it was relatively close. I guess if I ever get stuck at the UFO, but, uh, I'm gonna be prioritizing other venues. <laughs> um, There's too much security in that place. It's just it's too uh, too over the top. And I found it um, annoying to say the least. So, um, no, it's 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 it's. Uh, I guess that that's the difference in culture, right? I'm just going to rock concerts and just like, you get rock concerts, you're crazy. <laughs> wants us security guards the rock concert um techno seems to be culturally different um in that regard um it's more uh well it's more affluent right it, it prioritizes money more that's something that uh I mean, it wasn't true on... Actually, you know what? Maybe it's true of rock music nowadays. Maybe that's a broader cultural change, right? It didn't used to be true of dance music. Dance music didn't used to be, you know, about status and everything. It is now, though. Maybe rock music is like that now, too. Maybe I'm just at the wrong party. Anyways. Um... I'm gonna get some cigarettes and um, some bus tickets. And, uh, I bought some nachos last night, but I didn't eat them, so I gotta eat and get ready for tonight. Tonight's a little later, but I mean that it's it's it starts later, but it's gonna go like all day tomorrow, maybe. Uh, I didn't shower or anything. Um, I'm going to need to get something to eat and then shower, but how much did I have to drink last night just for the historical record? Okay, so I drank through a 20, so that's 5, and then I broke one, so that's 6. And I can account for 2 on the other one, so that's 8. I also had one of those rock stars, which is 2, 2 and a bit, so that's 10 and a mic's on the way there, which is also two and a bit, so... Twelve and a half. At least. And I don't know what I did. I, I may have just given her a ten, and not taken change, and it would have been... It might have happened, though. So, or I might have dropped it, or, like I say, it might have been connected to that pack of cigarettes that I can't... That, that, that I, I don't think I smoked that much. Um, so...
it was at least 12 and a half, but I mean, it was, I started drinking at, like, 6, so, even if, even if I stopped at 2, that's still, like, 8 hours, right, so, I mean, like, and I wasn't, like, when I walked out of there, or when I was helped out, um, the, like, I, I, I was fine, right, they seem to be very proactive at that bar, um, about ensuring that people on the floor are okay. Um, I think that a big part of it is that they're trying to sell water, right? Um, and I'm not buying the water. That might have been irritating them, but I'll tell you what I think the actual issue was. Um, I use the men's room. And I think that um, some people were uncomfortable with that. People were saying, you know, I, I, I think that that was the actual concern. It was a gender thing. Um, I guess that bar's not queer-friendly. Um, you would think an all-night dance bar in Detroit probably would be, but I guess that's, that place is not. Um, it's funny because the other options that I have are former gay bars. I can go to the one, the Far Walk, which is where I'm... I, I need to double-check, but I'm actually planning on going there tonight instead. The Far Walk used to be a gay bar. And then there's the shady one that the cops keep shutting down. That used to be a gay bar. So, I guess I, I just happen to be going to the, you know, <laughs> happen to be going to the one where... The reason I go there is because it's closest to the tunnel and it's open late. Like, really late, right? I should probably go to the shady... Like, if I want to be most concerned about somewhere that's queer-friendly, I probably want to go to the shady one. But... The shady one looks like it's not going to be open that late tonight. So I'm going to go, I'm going to take the far one. Like I say, it used to be a gay bar. Um, I still think that there's a, um, a substantial queer, uh, customer base there. And they're going to be open all day, right? So I'm going to show up there around 10 and I'm there who knows until when, right? Um, I could be there until noon. <laughs> I, I could be, really. Um, so... That's the, that's what I'm doing with that. Um, it's a shame, um, but I, I feel that that bar that I've been going to, and I've been there repeatedly, I, they're, they're not happy with me there. Um, and that's just the truth of it, and i got to adjust to that. So, um, like I say, I think that I, I was walking into the bathroom, when somebody came and took me and removed me. Which kind of got the point across to me that this is the issue. The other thing about the far walk is that there's a one person bathroom there. So if that's an issue, it, it shouldn't be because I can use the one person bathroom. So that's the intent of the night. Um, like I said, it's a downer. But what do you do? You gotta adjust, right? And if they don't want my business, they don't want me to hang out there, I'll find somewhere else to go. Seems to me that um, whenever I go in there, I, I drink a lot and have a good time. And I don't, uh, I don't think that they're acting in their self-interest. I think that um, that's very foolish on their behalf. But what do you do? You gotta adjust, right? Yeah. No eye makeup today, and I'm out early enough that I should catch the 9.30 bus. We'll talk in a second. Okay, so I have three options tonight, and... Okay, I was initially going to go to the far walk. Um, that was relying on a Detroit discount. I asked ahead. I cannot get the Detroit discount, um, because I live in Windsor. They want valid city of Detroit ID only. I double checked. Um, so if I don't get that, I mean, I'll put a cut cover in half down to 20. It's 40. It's a little too steep for me. A second option is. Um, an all-female DJ night, um, because, 
Also, when I'm dancing, about the last thing I care about is what gender the DJ is, but um, that's my perspective um, as a dancer. If I was a DJ, I may have a different perspective. Um, I might uh, look at it uh, as an employment opportunity, and then I might um, demand some kind of concept of equal opportunity. So, um, you know, and some of the money's going towards a, towards a trans shelter. So, I mean, that's, that's a good place for me to be tonight, but, um, the cover's a little steep. It's 30. I could do that if I have to. Um, and, uh, they're only going to be open till 6. Or at least only booked till 6. The other option is the place I went last night, um, and that I've had issues with security. Um, so last night, the night before, and last week, I've been there repeatedly. They seem to be kind of... kind of rude, really. Um, and that's really kind of what it comes down to. Um, like I say, um, they removed me when I was in the men's washroom. As though, I don't know if they're trying to get a point across or what. Um, somebody did say maybe I should use a women's washroom. Maybe I should. I've been over this a few times. There's perils in either option. I'm trying to take what I thought was the path of least resistance. Um, I'm not really attached to using the men's room. What I want to do and this is contingent on catching the 9.30 bus. So I want to go down there and talk. Briefly. If I can catch the 9.30 bus, I can get there at 10. I can get there like at doors, immediately at doors. Um, and maybe have a discussion with security. Um, If they can clarify what the problem is. Because basically what they told me was, you're having fun, get out of here. <laughs> you know, so I mean, like, obviously that's not what's really going on. So, if I can get somebody to be honest with me and tell me, okay, we have an issue with a trans person in the men's room. We have some other issue, then maybe I can address that. Um, the reason that that bar is better is because it has the cheapest cover. It's 25. I know there's cheap drinks. I think the all night. I think sorry. I think the all girl DJ set is, or all female DJ set. I think it's. Um, I think the price of beer is higher in that bar. And the thing about the expensive one is it actually has even cheaper beer, but it's not gonna kind of offset. Well, let's see. Six versus yeah. Go, go. No, I'm like at ten. If I go there. Okay. Yeah, no, that, that, that's, that can't be an option. Okay. Um, And the, the, the place that I often go to um, is also open like literally all night. Um, I'm going to be catching the Sunday Sunday bus back in the morning, so I gotta wait till 8:30. Um, it would be best for me to uh, to push the night as long as I can. Um, so that's what I'm planning on doing. I thought I dropped something there. Something landed near me. Behind me. I don't know what that was. Anyways, um, we got everything. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know what that was. Um, okay. Um, Yeah, I think uh, if I go in and uh, like maybe they just thought it was there too long, or I, I don't know. Um, I may even be so bold as to ask for an apology, but I mean I don't. Uh, I don't like the idea of having a bar in Detroit that's violent with me. Um, or let me rephrase that: I don't like the idea of leaving something unresolved. Um, so, it's early, um, if that works out I'll stay there, if it doesn't, um, I should be at the other spot by 10.30ish, right, until later, 10.40, so, uh, that's, uh, what I'm doing, let's hope it works out. Okay, so, it's, I don't know, 10.30ish. Um, the people here have made the, I believe, outlandish claim that I was stealing things out of people's purses last night. It's not true. Um, that sounds like an excuse. Um, whatever... Whatever the issue is, um, they don't want to own up to it, right? Um, I'm, I'm going with assumed transphobia and not enough balls to admit it. So I'm going to the other club. I'd kind of rather be where I'm going anyways, but it's just the earlier closing time may be an annoyance when it occurs. Um, I was kind of thinking that if I got in here, like this party, te that party technically ends at 6, right? But there's another one starting at 7, and like I'm thinking they're just gonna, they're just gonna keep it going, right? And it's like, you know, if I can explain to somebody, okay, I'm waiting for the bus, I'll leave at 8. They can make me take over again. Although with the way they're behaving, maybe they would. Um, it may work out, like, to be a wash. Meaning that the difference is that I'm walking an extra little bit. That means I'm gonna get an extra free drink in. I had to do an hour worth of walking. I'll be there before midnight. Hopefully closer to 11.30. But it's just... Nobody said anything about this claim that it was stealing things last night. What they said was that I'm drunk and people are complaining. Which is like, what the fuck does that mean? I got a bar, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. Actually, it was actually closer to 4.30, 5 o'clock. Um, people are complaining that there's a drunk at the bar. What? <laughs> you know, so it's... Uh, I, I don't even know, really. Um, like I say, it seems like these are all just explanations on top of a basic underlying concern. Um, and the evidence that I have suggests to me that the basic underlying concern is related to my gender expression. Whether you want to throw around flames of phobia or you want to just suggest that it has something to do with, uh, with the market or... See, I'm not... I'm not really... In, like. I don't want to hang out at a booty bar, right? Like, that's not... I want to hang out at more like a rave-type affair. Um, and I think that part of what I'm getting here is that while that place may not really be a booty bar, it seems to maybe want to understand itself as one. Um, 
And I think that maybe the kind of underlying concern is either one that um, this hot tranny on the dance floor is disturbing to a certain clientele or maybe to get more to the point is this hot tranny on the dance floor is not putting out um, and what the bar is understanding that as is okay this person is not attracting like it's not like I say it's a, it's a basic booty bar logic right and like I say I don't want to hang out at a fucking booty bar I want to go dancing like, I'm, I'm more you know I want to hang out in the rave type uh, places the only other thing I can think of um, is that the claim that I was stealing something out of somebody's purse which is ridiculous even in my most face moments I would never do that um, I have a very strong respect for personal property um, no it's just like, like you're looking at somebody that would never do that right but it might be an abstraction on the caveat which I would, rea I would respond to by saying that I ask for consent and the idea of theft is, is a false abstraction on the reality of the scenario um, and the situation. Um, there's, no, there's no theft involved when the transaction is consensual. And while I'm not particularly good at it, I'm always down for meeting friends as well. It's not entirely intended to be solely selfish. So, whichever way that you try to. Uh, hey, this is way. <laughs> yeah, that one is. I'm going to a different one though. Yeah. Yeah, that one's. Whatever abstraction it, it, it's bullshit however you look at it. Okay. Like there's no Like I say, no nobody said that to me last night. I, I it, it almost seemed like he just made that up on the spot. Um <laughs> But I mean that's like I would rather get an honest reaction you know like if, if you're if you don't want queer people at your bar just fucking tell me that because I'm sure there's a lot of other queer people that would like to know that as well don't come up with stupid excuses like I say where I'm going is where I should be it's just let's let's hope Let's hope they're open a little later when they climb. You gotta even wonder if maybe I picked up some dumb conservative that was like, she's stealing money out of my pocket, meaning like, because I live on disability. To begin with, I'm a Canadian, so like, your entire concept is bullshit. And second of all, we print money. This idea that taxpayers play, pay for social services is rooted in the most rudimentary ignorance of economics that you could imagine but this is like conservatives are retards right so i mean it's fiscal conservatives are retards social conservatives are assholes but fiscal conservatives they just don't understand how money works
I thought that's what happened. Um, see, I have an accusation. Nobody presented any evidence to me. Um, it's completely outside of my nature. I get, it's a ridiculous accusation. So, I mean, like, what's... Like I say, what's underlying that? If it's not... If it's not just transphobic bullshit, it's something else, right? And it was... I'm not going to dwell on that. I'm just going to go have fun. If you're a fiscal conservative in the United States, you have one argument, and it's about weapons. Where does your tax money go? It goes to weapons. You spend more money on weapons than the rest of the world combined. You have no health care. You have no social services. And there are strains of libertarianism that are specifically geared towards addressing that problem. If you think your taxes are too high and you're pissed off about it, it's not, your money is not going towards somebody that's receiving assistance benefits. It's not going towards Medicare. It's not going towards Social Security. It's going towards weapons. And these are not just guns. These are ridiculous weapons. And so if you are a fiscal conservative, you have that argument. You can say, I don't want to pay taxes because all the money goes towards weapons manufacturers and that's bullshit. Okay, I agree with you. That's the only argument you have. Because anything else in the budget is sustainable. The thing that's not is weapons. And the guy you elected is going to put a lot more into weapons. And that's what you should be concerned about. But as mentioned, nobody said anything about that to me last night. And I'm left to conclude that that was invented from a whole cloth in the moment. Anyways. I'll be there soon. Listen, you're the richest country in the history of the goddamn fucking world. You think the richest country in the history of the goddamn fucking world can't afford a couple of social services? I mean, come on. It's, it, it, it's a disingenuous argument from the start. I'm not saying anything that hasn't been said. But where is your money going? Why can't you afford things that every other country that's much poorer can't afford? Because you spend all your money on weapons. I'll work this out on the floor. Like I say, this is... This is where I should have been in the first place. Let's just hope they're open later than they claim. I had fun tonight. But not only was that not a long party, it was even shorter than expected. It's like 5.30. I had to walk out of some cops in the whole mess. My immediate concern is that my feet are very sore. I've been on my feet for a long time. I felt it this morning. I probably should have listened. My shoes are fucked. But I need to get to the diner because it is very early. I'm going to get to the diner at like 6 o'clock or something. And I'm going to have to wait for like two and a half hours. So I need to make sure I have enough for a coffee. It's going to be tight. And I'm going to have to sit for a bit. My feet are... I need, I need shoes immediately. Um, when we get home, we'll take a look at them. They're brutal. I knew they were brutal coming out. I was actually worried at one point that I might lose them. Like I might end up walking home without shoes on. No, like they're that bad. Um, so, and I got a ways to walk, and I'm gonna have to sit for a bit. This is why the other place was more attractive to me because I expected it to be open later, but so be it.
I had fun on the night as it existed. I just I wish I didn't have to spend the end of it sitting in a, in a diner waiting for my feet to come back. If I can make it there at all. I think I'll be okay. That clock says 5.30. Which means I have three hours to wait. Lots of people are very concerned about my well-being. You know... Here's the thing. Maybe you really are concerned about my well-being. But I've been over this before. I cannot... No matter how much I'd like to believe that you're concerned about my well-being, I cannot take that risk. A random person driving by in a car? Do you expect me to talk to you? Are you insane? Like I say, <laughs> people seem to be concerned about my well-being, you know, and, and that's great. It's just, I can't possibly talk to you when you slow down in your car as I'm walking down the street at 5.30 in the morning in Detroit. That's insane. I can't do that. <laughs> like, what are you thinking? As concerned as you know they are. If you're concerned about my well-being, the first thing you should do is tell me not to talk to cars when they slow down and talk to me when I'm walking home at 5.30 in the morning in Detroit. Right? But it's, it's not to feel ungrateful, you know, if somebody's legitimately concerned, I appreciate that. It's just, you, you can't, I'm not going to talk to you. It's actually quite pleasant this morning. The temperature's well. I don't know, I don't know why this happens in Detroit. You walk around in Detroit and there's like these steaming piles of gas coming out of the ground. It, like, you know, it's persistent. And you don't really want to walk through it, but you don't... Excuse me. You don't really have much of a choice either. <laughs> yeah. My feet are screaming at me because I've been on them for three nights in a row of dancing and it's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> I need to sit. I'm like halfway there. Yeah, kind of sucks. Well, that's definitely a nice shot. Kind of apocalyptic almost. I was walking away from it. I kind of wish I was walking into it, huh? I'm just walking into this. Shame. But the birds in the ambience is actually a very pleasant walk through in the back of downtown Detroit. I guess this is the stadium right here. Yeah, walk around it, I guess. Pleasant. I kind of wish I was walking home though. That's the thing. Anyways, coffee. So, how many people could you house in a church this size? Still going. It's a big church. How many people do you think? I don't know. It's an interesting question to ask though as I walk by and there's people sleeping on the steps. I don't know how many people you could house in here, but I'm sure that the couple that are sleeping on the steps could fit. If they squeezed in and made some room. And can you believe that after putting my feet through that, I'm not going to get stop at the coffee spot, but I'm going to walk up what we're looking for a smoke? See, it's because of the feet. 
I really feel I need to sit down and have a cigarette. So I can forestall the agony that much longer. And have like a long time to wait. Just found somewhere to sit and have a smoke. Oh, There's McDonald's right there. That was about as far as I was gonna walk and it's as far as I had to walk. I'm gonna stop in there to get a coffee. Um, I know what the underlying problem is and I kind of hinted at it earlier. And I experienced it again this evening. It's that people's girlfriends like dancing with me. Why are people complaining? It's because their girlfriends are dancing with me. I get it. But listen, I'm just dancing. And if she wants to dance and you suck at it, then what's the harm in that? See, I want to be clear. It's not a situation where I'm like, you know, on the floor. That's not, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I start dancing and people's girlfriends come towards me. And that's not really my fault. And in fact, I enjoy dancing. But that's why people are upset. So it's a possessive issue. And actually, I was kind of keeping an eye on that tonight because it was supposed to be like a kind of like a feminist dance party. Dudes exist, <laughs> you know, they exist. And they're gonna be anywhere that people are. It's the truth of it, right? Anyways, um, I know that that's, like if people were complaining, that's the reason why I, every time I'm out dancing it happens, but it's like not my fault. I'm just having a good time. Don't, don't blame me, man. Anyways, I'm gonna get a coffee. Oh, my feet are not happy with me. They're supposed to be open and aren't, but my feet are at halt. So I'm gonna sit here for a few minutes. Yeah. Somebody may have decided not to show up. <laughs> my, my feet are halt. I, I can't move right now. And it's like 6.30ish. I've got an hour anyways. I don't, I don't really want to move because my feet, yeah. Give it a few minutes. I don't want to sit outside though either, so. I say right now my feet are at a halt. Good a few minutes. So they're really not open, huh? Okay. No, I'm walking. I, yeah. No, I just had a halt there for a few minutes. I'm okay now. Walking around, I think I've got six to five frozen or something. Oh, my feet are fucked. Okay. The sun is coming up and it's warm, and I wish I could enjoy it over my feet. Am I going to complain about my feet for the next, until I get home? I'm certainly going to be dragging myself home and giving them some space. Uh, my feet need some rest. This should be much nicer than it is right now. Why did I walk so far? It's crazy. Anyways. I'm almost there. So you might be asking, why are my feet fucked? Well, it's not like I did anything wrong. It's just the consequence of three nights worth of heavy dancing. Um, the state of my shoes doesn't help, but it's like, I don't really think there was a way to avoid It's, it's just necessary. <laughs> kind of sucks, but it's necessary. Anyways, it's right across the street. I am slowly transit. <coughs> 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 
yeah. I'm slowly transiting to the tunnel. Um, I've got like a limp. <laughs> Very sore feet. Oh, I'll try good this morning. Ah, that's so nice. It's nice to be able to walk home in the morning without being cold. That's that's very nice. It's very pleasant. One of the things I liked about last night was that the dancing was very humid very hot and humid in there and I was sweating like crazy it was, it was beautiful <laughs> absolutely beautiful <sighs> that was a ridiculous weekend um, I leveraged for myself to do it I, I gotta deal with that first thing like when I wake up but I'm really not dealing with anything when I get home. And probably not until Monday anyways. Um, I think I'm all party out for a bit. Um, and I'll probably just go ahead and pay it down in full. Um, I, can't, uh, I can't imagine doing, wanting to do anything um, besides sit <laughs> for quite a while. That's fine, I kind of intended that. I mentioned that I kind of wanted to blow out. So, um, I'm expecting a quiet month. That's fine. Um, it's happened before. Um, it'll happen again. I've got such terrible gas. I have to like stop every couple of minutes. Ah. To like, let the gas escape but yeah, never really does uh, yeah it's another it's a couple of blocks <laughs> it's one of those situations where you think you're all right but you're never really quite sure until you get home because <laughs> you know it's gas but you can't actually fart because you'll shit yourself right and you're pretty sure you make it, but in fact, I don't think I've ever not made it. I always make it, but it's, like I said, one of those mornings where you're not sure until you go. <laughs> and I'm not quite sure right now. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. Okay. Let's turn this off.